Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. What would have been my son's eighth um, birthday? Um, we unfortunately lost him last year to a brain tumour. Where we want to come in is just to be able to help um, parents first kind of digest what's going on and then really help them get the best support because I think that support is so important. Okay, we're excited. You're going to do readings for us. Little prediction readings for you. Woo! These little bursts for you because I like June, to get into it. June, darling, is the word cash involved in mine at all? <laughs> <laughs> Hey girls, what news please? Well, Debbie asked me to go to a ball on Saturday night and I did and it was a very, it was a lovely ball um, and it was actually for the Brain Tumour Charity. Oh, uh, which, amazing. And we, we, we're all so connected to that cause, yep. aren't we? All of us. Yeah, they, they've yeah. raised a hundred million pounds in, wow. in the last 25 years, a hundred yes million pounds mm -hmm. to research incredible. and it's really incredible they are they are just fantastic people they are and we and we had and of course we're, we're connected my, my dad sadly died from a brain tumor and my other my my ex-husband's father also did so kira my daughter they actually found her when she was in Hollyoaks many years ago because they said they wanted a young person to help get the word out and she had a lot of uh, PA and publicity stuff that was going on at that time and so it was very good for her to get the word out then uh, and that's what we did and we've been friends with them ever since Neil and Angela Dixon are, are just incredible incredible people and, and it was lovely and we took with us the lovely Debbie McGee we did Paul, sure. Paul, did you get Paul. your did you get your invitation because I must have missed <laughs> well, that, well sadly Paul sadly Paul died from a brain tumor as well so that's the connection. And of course, Sherry's connected because of her brother. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yes. And it's a wonderful, wonderful charity. And I'm so thrilled to be part of it. I know. My brother, too, um, has got a brain tumour, sadly, um, but is doing really, really well. There are so many, you know, survival things now and, and, and clinical trials and a lot of because of these people. Yes. Because, yeah. of, you know, the fundraising. And so and the prognosis initially doesn't always end up being the reality. No. That's the amazing thing, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And it's, yeah. it really depends on the individual. Mm. Um, and I think yeah. you have to just, uh, uh, you know, make memories and live your life. Yes. And do what you can. So many different sorts of brain tumours as well. You know, yeah. some that, that kill immediately, some that go on for years, some that go into remission forever. Yeah, um, but there's but there are there are so many different sorts. But we do have a, a a wonderful guest coming on who lost her little boy. Can you tell us about her, Dee? Yes, her name's Louise Long, and her little boy died about a year ago um, of a brain tumor. And it's called the Dylan Strong Foundation. We're, we're so thrilled that she's coming to talk to us about her new charity. Louise, hi, hi, hi. Hi. Louise. It's so lovely to actually meet you. I've heard so much about you from my daughter, Sid. Thank um, you. Louise, tell me, the Dylan Strong Foundation, mm -hmm. you, you formed that quite recently. Tell us about it. So um, we formed it in March on what, what would have been my son's eighth um, birthday. Um, we unfortunately lost him last year to a brain tumour. So... He was um, diagnosed at the very beginning of lockdown as the world went into lockdown and was sort of um, focusing on COVID. Um, our worst fears were kind of made a reality when we were told that our, um, our seven-year-old son at the time had, um, had a brain tumour and he had zero, zero percent of survival. So um, yeah, it was obviously absolutely awful. We fought as hard as we could and we did everything for him and he was absolutely incredible, but unfortunately we did lose him last June. So we launched the charity, uh, the Dylan Strong Foundation, because he was just incredible. His, his mindset, the way he dealt with everything, he was absolutely incredible. And we think it was because we had incredible support up, around us. We had um, some people that were part of our story. We did everything in terms of nutrition, 
um, and we really focused on that. So he was able to thrive whilst he was going through treatment. And there was there was a variety of things that we just found made our journey um, with brain with his brain tumor and with cancer just um, just really helpful to us. So we set up the charity just to be able to help other other parents and obviously their children going through just any cancer diagnosis, but um, you know brain tumors and yeah childhood cancer especially. There are more. Um, I was going to say under forty. It is the most the second most common childhood cancer. Yeah, it is. That's right. It is. Yeah, because my, my father died from a brain, brain tumor when he was only thirty two. Wow. Right, um, no, but it, again, but that was a long, long time ago. And in those years, I mean, there's lots and lots of treatments that go on. But but you know, the thing is that you're very stoic and very strong. And and I think the thing is having a little boy like that, your your little boy. This is probably driving you to help other bereaved parents. Uh, are there any are, are there any people that can uh, that can help you do this, or are you doing this on your own? So at the moment, we're very much on our own. I'm sure there is incredible support out there. Um, I know there are, are, are other charities doing what we were doing, but what we found is when we were given the diagnosis and when we were told about Dylan, you're told and then you're just thrown into this completely new world and it is so overwhelming. And what I found, and again, speaking to Sid um, D as well, is that actually if maybe we had had someone to go through us and say, right, you know, let let me help you process what you've just been told. And then whether then that person helps signpost you to various charities, because there are incredible charities out there. But when, when Dylan was diagnosed, we weren't told about any charity apart from two, which was Click Sergeant and Momentum, um, mm -hmm. which are both fantastic and they're brilliantly supportive. But I didn't know about brain tumour research. I didn't know about um, the brain tumour charity. I didn't know that there was all of this incredible support because you're so overwhelmed by so much information um, and you know I didn't know some basic things and again I was talking the other day I didn't even know that there was just all of this support I didn't know that so I think where we want to come in is just to be able to help um, parents first kind of digest what's going on and then really help them get the best support because I think that support is so important um, and you know I don't know whether it was different for us because we very we started at the beginning of covid when everybody was so focused on covid it was like nothing else existed mm -hmm. um or whether this this is you know what happens um i don't know it's difficult but we really want to be able to just support and help families that have been given this life changing news we want to mm -hmm. help them continue to live the best life that they can depend you know it doesn't matter how long they've got or how long their child's got we want to help them, you know, make memories and, um, you know, just deal with it as, in the best way that they can. What you're doing is so important. Thank I you. lost my brother from a brain tumour two years ago, but he was 71. And I, in my ignorance, believed it was an older person's problem. You know, I didn't think now, of course, having been through those horrendous two years, mm. Yeah, I realise how young you can develop a brain tumour. And I think what you're doing is important to reach out to families and, mm. and that you had a young son. Mm. And there's so many people in your situation who need to talk and to Absolutely. talk to that help. Yeah, and I think for us as well, one of the few things that I did find um, difficult when I did speak to a few charities that reached out was that actually they didn't know what we were going through they were brilliant and they were offering support but actually they didn't know what we were going through you know and I think hopefully the fact that I've gone through it and my family have gone through it and you know we really want to bring in some people that have gone through it that will really give comfort to another family because sometimes asking for help everyone struggles don't they asking for help but we want to be there and go you don't have to ask us we know what you're going through here's we know you need this you know yeah. it's little things like you know parents don't get fed in hospitals um so I just find that crazy so as a parent you're doing all you can to protect your child and be there for your child and you know and and, and deal with everything else yes you're not even having your basic needs met so again, as a charity, if we can go into those hospitals and help feed the parents and make sure they have everything mm -hmm. that they need, even in terms of deodorant, 
sanitary items, yes. things that they wouldn't have just thought to collect because they're so focused on their child. I know that their child will have everything, but they might not. So again, we want to go in and help with those things, things that are maybe just not being thought about right now. Also, you as a parent, you, all you do is, is you're focusing on your child and you don't even well, you suddenly think, oh my God, I haven't eaten for three days. Or, yeah, or washed yeah. or anything. It's so inspirational that your creativity is going to be a voice for everyone else who is going through this and how important it is. Yeah, the, absolutely. It's an honour to have you on here because it's the Thank beginnings you. of something that nobody else would have thought of. As you said, there's plenty of other support, but not for the parents as well. And again, yeah. I hadn't even thought till you said sanitary thing. I hadn't even crossed my mind. No, course, and it... Things. yeah it didn't me it didn't it me matters. I you know a few it, times when we did go into hospital um for, for treatment and Dylan maybe um had a slight temperature or anything yeah. it could have been anything he was um admitted into hospital for shingles and we ended up staying for five days even though he was fine he needed to yeah. have antibiotics of course. and I just didn't even expect it and you know my husband couldn't come in because he was looking after our other children or he was at work or oh. and obviously covid at the time yeah. he wasn't allowed in anyway impossible um but you feel so isolated and so alone and again when you've got a child with cancer you're often isolated in a hospital yeah so you can't and you don't want to leave them I was, you know there was no way i was leaving dylan this is a breakthrough for everybody who had were you know was in is going to be in your shoes so that's amazing i'm interested to know what's the next focus for the charity so um we've been doing lots of fundraising recently my husband um uh, my um, my two brothers and uh, brother in laws and my brother um last weekend on on the anniversary of dylan's death rode from our house in surrey um to manchester united over two days so they did 240 wow. miles which was incredible Manchester United were amazing they put on a big show uh, you know a big um a balloon arch and they sent us round the stadium because it was Dylan's favorite he was absolutely football obsessed mm. so we we've, oh. we've done some amazing fundraising but now we want to get into the hospitals and really support so we need to get our name out there so more people know about us and can access that support um and yeah just just do all we can now to really help thank you thank so you. much for thank, you, thank, thank you louise thank you so we'll much do all we can to help you thank, thank you, you. Yeah, thank you so well. much thank, thank you. you see you soon bye, bye. 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 how well, amazing so important it really is and how strong of her to actually do the charity when yeah. just you know after all she's been through to use it positively mm. yeah now, darlings, we need a little bit of um, hope, and we're going to get that from our amazing friend and colleague of the show, who is going to do a little reading for our future. It is only the one and only June Field. Woo! Oh, hey, welcome, June. Nice to see you again, girls. You're looking great really to see coming. you. I'm excited. We're excited. You're going to do readings for us, aren't you? I'm going to do little little prediction readings for you. Woo! I'm going to yeah, just little, little bursts for you because I like June, getting it. June, in. darling, is the word cash involved in mine at all? <laughs> <laughs> it could be, Hattie. It could be. <laughs> let me let me see when we get to you. Well, let's start with you first, then, Hattie. Okay. Uh -oh. No pressure. Uh, Harry, brace, brace, brace. Right, Harriet. <laughs> okay. First off, when I go to Harriet, let me just um, go into her energy. And I do feel, first off, that she's a perfectionist. She likes things done just so. She doesn't, she doesn't like incompetence. That doesn't sit well with her. And so, <laughs> therefore, I do feel that there are projects coming on. But you know this, can I have to say that, Harriet? You just, you've got your fingers in too many different pies all at the one time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Does that make sense? Meat yes. pie, apple pie. Every all pie. Of these, all yeah. of these. All well, it's called survival. Time. It's called survival. <laughs> so, you're, you're, multitasking, you have taken to a different level. You have. <laughs> and the, on, you, you managed to do it, and you managed to pull things off, but you fit in so many different things that you end up, you think, oh, my gosh, was I supposed to do that? You find yourself double booked, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. and you like to do things 100%. So, therefore, you chastise yourself. You're work so hard to get it done properly. So even if you've double booked, you try and do the two double bookings. <laughs> Always. Correct? Yes, well, yes. For you, if I had to give you a month that would suit you, I think September 
would be a good month for you, Harriet. Great. What's <laughs> happening in September? Is there any projects coming up? Because I yes, feel there's a shift. I start, I start a new show called Stepping Out. Okay, well, there's a shift in September. And so yeah. you asked me about cash. It'll be there. <laughs> Can I just say though, hashtag never enough. Just say. So. I know. Um, I know what you mean. So good for you for September. That's a turning thank, point. Thank you, darling. Okay. Debbie, Great. can we go to you now? Is that yeah. all right? Um Debbie, you're a caring soul. You're somebody that's like a mother hen to everyone. You see to everybody, you're a fixer. You like things to be just so. You will go to one to get the other one fixed. Can you fix that for this? So you're a bit of a multitasker also, but it doesn't seem to matter to you as much because you'll think, well, if I can't do it, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> like that. But you, you, you'll just go, well, okay, I tried to do that and it didn't happen, etc. So I feel you're more relaxed as an individual um, and you see a lot to other people rather than yourself. You're a bit of a giving individual. So I would want you to rein that energy in a little bit and stick with putting it around yourself a bit than giving it away because I feel that you're depleted. If I had to give you a month going forward, I feel that it would probably be around November, December time for you. Now, I know that seems like 100 years away, but it's not. It's not. It's not that far away. But I feel that there's a shift with you and that your life's going to be fulfilled in some way. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. You, know, you feel as if there's a little, bit missing, a little bit missing here yeah. for you. You just seem to be fixing everyone else, but there's a bit missing for you. So I would want to say around the end of the year that you'll feel that that little missing piece of a puzzle is fitted back in and you'll become a whole person. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good. Well Lovely. done. Oh, Thank good. All righty. Okay, let's go on to D. Where are you, D? Let's go to you. Um, a little bright light. That's what you are. That shines in the dark. Mrs. <laughs> positive. That's what you are. Full of energy. Full of positivity. Always looks on the bright <laughs> side of stuff. A bit of an optimist. <laughs> True. Yeah. Good sense of humor. Great individual. And you do think positively. I'm, I'm always drawn to your energy because you've just got that positive feel about you. You People that think something's impossible make it impossible, but you just keep plodding on and doing stuff. Um, without saying um, too much what's going on, but bigger things are coming for you. So you better set your ducks up in order because when things hit you, Mrs., it's going to hit you like big time. So you're mm -hmm. going to need to be organised mm -hmm. and... But I, I feel that this year is a really good year for you. And mm -hmm. this year is a year where things will change and your life will change. And family in and around you, I do feel as if there's a stronger bond there with family. Mm -hmm. People all drawing together, a bond that wasn't there before, but it's just a better understanding of family pulling together. Mm -hmm. You actually thought things have opened your eyes up in, in many aspects. And I do feel that you're starting to separate the wheat from the chaff within your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And a lot of people go through that at different times. You're mm -hmm. in the middle of that at the moment. But I've always mm -hmm. got a good feel about you. There's another string coming to your bow um, in different areas. And you're going to branch out, Mrs. So all is good you. in your Oh, Thank you. Wow. Good one. Thank, Thank you. One. Sherry. <laughs> yes. When I go to you, you seek perfection in an imperfect world. And I get the impression that you give up a lot of times on things and, and you shouldn't because I think that you're more gifted than you give yourself credit for. You, I was never born with the patience, okay? And I don't think that you're the most patient person in the world either when it comes to yourself. I feel that you, you want something and you want it yesterday. Most women do, but you're like, I want it yesterday. I want things done now. Why can't it be this very moment? Mm. Things are happening for you. I think things are going to go a little bit stagnant and then they're going to start ramping up for you this year. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Things are going to go a little bit stagnant for you, but then they're going to start ramping up this year. 
So not to worry, not to be impatient. <laughs> You're quite a sensitive individual. And I think that you're going through like a transition just now, whereas you don't know whether you're upside down or inside out um, <laughs> at this time. And I feel that's happened probably over the last six months with you, that you've just thinking, what the flaming eggs happening to me? But just bide your time because things have gone down a bit, but they'll start ramping up again for you once you get the measure and you've gone through that transition. Patience pills, they don't sell them in Holland and Barrett because I've tried looking. I've tried looking <laughs> for myself. <laughs> Just be a little bit more patient with yourself. Things will happen. Okay. I'll, I'll try. Good. <laughs> Anything you want to ask me, girls, if it's lottery numbers, forget it. I don't get them. <laughs> do you oh, get yes. your inspiration. That's what I want to know. Where does, does it find you? Do you just, you think about somebody and then the words and the, and, and it all just comes into play. What yes. happens to you? It's just, I get into an energy or I listen to a voice or I look yeah. into someone's eyes and I just feel who they are, what's coming for them. I just get, uh, this is the way I was born. It's not something that I is new to me. I, I don't know what it's like to be normal, as they would say. Um, <laughs> it's just something I've always had. Yeah. And I just get a good feel for people, a good feel of their characters and who they are. And then I hook into that energy and then I follow it along. So that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. And the, the healing, the healing is, is fantastic as well that you do. Yeah, it, it really is. And you've taught me a lot about, you know, learning how to, you know, the, the fact that you say, you know, when somebody, when a child falls over, you pick them up and you kiss them. And that's, that's how it all starts. That that's a healing, isn't it? Make it better, rub it to make it better. Yeah. And you remember when, when you were little, you, your mummy used to say, it's okay now, yeah. it's, it's better. But the, but that is energy, isn't it? And I, and I find myself doing that an awful lot. But now that you've, the one you've talked about that, I then found myself touching different people and, and, and actually wondering why I was touching them. Because people wouldn't realise that's what they're doing. People that are empaths can't help but touch someone. If someone's not well, they'll walk over to them and go, oh, you're okay, or, or how yeah. are you, or take their hand. They're drawn to it, and that's a healing. That's a passing on of energy. And a lot of people don't realise they do it. Some people just can't help doing it. And that's what you do. You transfer your energy. You give them healing. And it's, it's because it's inside and you're drawn to it. But the more that you realise that you're doing that, and the more that you've, you can understand why, the more that you can send out the energy and surround someone with it and heal them. You don't even need to be touching them you just need to be compassionate and caring and a few words and the minute you're in their energy and the intent is right then they start getting your energy it's all about energies and, and, yeah, and I don't know if this has ever happened to you when I, I was going through a pretty bad phase and I was so concentrating on myself that it, I actually didn't feel very well because all the energy that I use that I like to give to people to fix things to to help them I'd stop doing that and therefore, I kind of blocked myself. Yeah, you have to, it has to be flowing. There's got to yeah. be a balance. There's got to be a balance in everything in life. And if it's not flowing and you don't have that balance, you'll become stagnant. And the more you give out in life, the more you get back. That's, that's what it's about. It's about pushing energy out and touching mm -hmm. as many people as you can. And it does come back to you. It was interesting what you said about the resonance, about also to Debbie, you said you have to look after yourself too. Harry, it's about a balance. If the, yeah. you don't have the balance, if it, it could tip one way, the other. you give too much away yeah. and you'll deplete. And yeah. if you don't give enough, you'll become stagnant. So it is about getting a balance and everyone's different. You all mm. get to know yourself. That's why they say that life begins at 50, because by by that time, we all know who we are. We know what we like, what we don't like, what temperature we want, what food we want, who we'll, who we like. <laughs> we don't compromise. We'll go, no, I'm not doing that. I won't like it. They're definitely yeah. not going. I don't like the heat. You know, so you, you know who you are. I'm very excited about the possibility of Holland and Barrett and a patience pill. Because I think if we <laughs> encourage this, we could get a job lot. I don't think there's ever going to be enough for Kerry, obviously. All of us. <laughs> I think it would be an amazing I, I thing. What I'm most excited about is getting to 50. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I know. You have not been patient for that, really, darling. She's, she's not had enough meds from Holland and Barrett. The reality <laughs> meds, she doesn't no. take. 
yeah. Oh. <laughs> all got, you've all got good things coming to you. You've you've all worked very hard. You're all very different individuals, very different, but you seem to gel well together. Gel well. You, Dune, can I just ask you, what yeah. do you predict for Wonderbirds? I predict, well, I, I think I already did that. I already <laughs> predicted that there was good things coming and it was going to be bigger. And yeah. I still think that it's going to go from strength to strength to strength because, because you're all different individuals. You gel well. You've got, got a bit of everything in there. Mm -hmm. So watch this space for Wonderbirds. Thank oh, you. Thank you. you know, we were, were nominated for an award. I don't know if anyone knows that, by the way. <laughs> We've only said it about 50,000 times. Well, but way before that, I think I did say on the show that this is going to, Wonderbirds is going to go far. Yes, you did. So yeah. we're not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. Still going. No. Oh, thank, yeah. you. thank you, June. That is so fabulous. <laughs> thank you, darling. We'll see you very, very soon. Thank yeah. you for joining Lovely us today. Lovely to see you. Bye, Bye darling. darling. Love, darling. Bye, darling. Bye. Bye. That would be amazing, a patience pill. Wouldn't it? Oh. No. Life begins at 50. I'm excited about that. I really am. <laughs> yeah, no. So that who was... have we got coming on on Friday? Ah, Sherry. A friend of Sherry's. So on Friday, we've got a lady called Yvonne Ball who was married to the amazing Bobby Ball. And her life is as interesting, which you will find out on Friday. Ooh. Ooh. Can't wait. Can't wait. See Rock you then, darling. Rock All right, darling. Rock. See you then. Bye. Bye, darling. Bye. <laughs>